Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White, dog trainer Alan Cable, groomer Joey Villani, communicator Joy Turner, and here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. Okay, here's the numbers, toll free, 1-866-405-8405. We'd love to talk to you. Dr. Debbie is here. Alan Cable is here. Joey Villani is stuck in Denver. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, he's stuck at the airport. Oh, poor guy. Trying to get back across the country, back to California for the show. Didn't make it in time, nope. unfortunately. Uh, but uh, we'll help you with your grooming questions anyway. Before we hit the phones, oh, this is really cool. You've, you've booked, again, just another phenomenal show. We're having on a lady who has a pet octopus. Now, How fun. I know this is weird. We've had people on that have had all kinds of weird animals, but I think this is a first. Yeah. You probably never treated one, Dr. Debbie. I, 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 no, I haven't, but I've eaten them. And <laughs> 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 just, so had sorry. to go there. Uh, I'm so sorry. I had to. <laughs> you got to eat something. Yeah, How really? come nobody cares about the poor cows? They're yeah. cute. <laughs> okay. Well, uh... So we'll find out. Just don't mention that when she gets on the phone that Please. you've eaten okay. octopus right. before. Tell her an octopus ate me. We're also having on a dentist, not just a regular dentist, but a dentist that does dental work on wild animals like chimpanzees, orangutans, bears, uh, bears and tigers, and all those hippos. My gosh. So that's all. Maybe just, you do my crazy aunt. No one could get in her mouth. I'll tell you that right now. She actually needs to have that thing sewed shut. I remember from the last reunion. Well, she's only got one tooth, and she's trying to keep it. I see in the office here that uh, one of the secretaries has quit in smoking, and she's using one of these vaporizers. Have you yeah, seen those, these things? What do they call them? E-cigarettes? You see e-cigarettes. a lot of them nowadays. Yeah. Well, news comes out of, uh, this is the UK, where a Staffordshire Bull Terrier thought to have become the first pet to die after eating one of these <gasps> e-cigarette really? refill fluids. Oh, no. Of course, it's uh, liquid nicotine is what it really is. <sighs> And apparently all they had to do was just bite into it. Within moments, the animal was sick and, and, and a fatality. See, yes. I just think my method is so much more effective. Yeah, what, what is that? But nobody will. Well, you know, you just, uh, I, I have these people, these minions, and they'll follow you around with a water pistol filled with gasoline. And every time you light up, you know, they just shoot you. <laughs> with gasoline. That's yeah, actually not it's a, effective. It is effective. That is, that is a good idea. You don't do that once. Stacy, what are you working on? Well, it's the season, the season for egrets to nest. And in Fort Worth, Texas, they're having some problems with that because these huge birds are leaving huge droppings. Oh. And all of their lawns that were once green are now turning brown. But these neighbors uh, in the neighborhoods where these birds nest have gotten together and they've come up with a plan to get those birds the heck out of there. I don't know if I'd want to live in this neighborhood because what they're planning is going to be pretty loud. I'll tell you about it. Coming up on Animal Radio News. And let's take another one for Dr. Debbie. We have Randy. Hey, Randy. Hi. Oh, a female Randy. How are you doing? Yes. Where are you calling from today? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Gotta love it. Yep. What's going on with your animals? Well, they're, well, getting cold. I (laughs) I have several cats, and... One started off with a cold and got her better, and then another one started another cold, bad eye cold, got him better, and then my one of my kittens started coughing and sneezing, something different from all the others. And mm-hmm. I thought it was a cold, but it wasn't getting better, and it was just getting worse. So I took her to the vet, and he ended up saying that it was asthma. Mm, okay. So, But my other cat ended up having the same symptoms as as this cat. So I figured it was just a a bad, bad cold and not asthma. Mm -hmm. Okay. With the the reverse sneezing and the coughing and um, regular sneezing. And, like, it made this noise and gestures of coughing up a hairball as well. And it it was just something I've never seen before. Okay. And the timing of this cat being sick to the others was how, how close to the other kitties? Oh, within a week. Within a week. But, yeah, but the one, the kitten that had the reverse sneezing and all that, that the vet said had asthma, my other cat ended up getting, having the same symptoms mm-hmm. like a days later. So did we do anything to treat the kitty that had the presumed asthma as far as any medications, yeah. anything that was done? Well, I was already giving her amoxicillin that I got from... Um, I had just taken her to get vaccinated a week before, and I called them up. I said, hey, is there any way you can just 
you know, send over a prescription to get some amoxicillin because I know she has at least a cold. So I started her on amoxicillin. When I took her to the vet, they gave, um, sent me home with prednisone. So I was given okay. her that. And it really, I really think it helped because she is almost better. I mean, she's sneezing a little bit right now. It's been almost two weeks. And she, both of them are almost completely better. Well, that's that's good. I, I would tell you, I find that a little bit unusual because um, for cats, when we're talking about respiratory infections or colds, 90% of the time, these are infections that are viral caused. Okay. So a lot we of times we'll throw antibiotics at cats that have a, what we call a cold, and, and it really only helps treat secondary infections. So it doesn't really do anything for the virus. Um, and, and in most cases, it's either Khaleesi virus or herpes virus. And these are viruses that, you know, they can be exposed to as kittens and they can harbor and then that may come out later in life with other things that may occur. So you, you mentioned that she she had just had vaccinations recently, and, you know, that challenges the immune system. So mm-hmm. if she were faced with a respiratory agent shortly after getting vaccines, you know, she might not have the, the immune ability to really kind of um, fight that fully. Um, and typically, if we have viral infections um, in cats, we respiratory infections, we don't typically treat that with steroids um, unless there's a really strong component of inflammation um, or lower airway disease, so lower lung problems. So that maybe, you know, maybe your cat has asthma. Um, it's possible. Uh, historically, when I get that kind of history, I don't really feel very strongly about that. I personally like to prove that with x-rays because we can see some pretty significant or typical changes in the lungs in cats who have asthma. He, um, he did take an x-ray. To see if, if it was in anything in the lungs and it wasn't pneumonia and he just came to the conclusion that it was asthma. But then mm-hmm. when my other cat was getting the same symptoms, I was like, it just must be a cold. And he did, he did come to the conclusion that there was inflammation. So I think that's why he gave the prednisone. Yeah, and and the test will be you know in the evidence you know from here forward because cats with asthma usually don't have just one episode. This this would typically be something you're going to see more of. Okay. So um, any cat with a uh, asthma, just like a person with COPD, you throw the flu or something at a person who has a, a lung problem, and they're going to get substantially sicker. So I think that would be something that you know I'm glad the whole household of kitties is healthy now, but it would be very important to make sure everyone's up to date on their vaccines that you keep yeah. kind of a close watch on that, preferably in. Kitties, so we're not getting outdoor exposure to a lot of other um, uh, infectious disease. And really watch her particularly close. And, and the typical asthma-type symptoms, the dry kind of cough where it sounds like they're going to blow something out of their, their uh, throat. Yeah, um, yeah. That kind of coughing spasm, um, if that's an ongoing thing, then then we definitely look at things like steroids or bronchodilators uh, for those kitties that have long-term problems with that. And let me ask, is she a kitty that's a little ample around the, the belly side? No, no. no? She, she's a kitten. She, I, I bottle fed her. She was like three weeks old. But no, she's still a little tiny, though. I don't know if gray cats stay smaller than other cats longer, but she's she's a little gray cat, and she's very small. And okay. She was probably born in June, so she's not, she's not, no, she doesn't have a big belly at all. Yeah, so I was going to say, because normally a cat with asthma tends to be the, the kind of the mm-hmm. overweight male cat is kind of the poster child for yes. asthma. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, yeah. Um, so. So I'm going to be still a little skeptical, uh, and I think um, I would definitely be cautious because asthma in a kitty under one year of age is really unusual. Okay, um, okay. So just be watchful. Didn't you mention Good. last week, Dr. Debbie, that like the steroids, the prednisones actually could start or awaken these herpes virus or colds, upper respiratory infections? Yes, exactly. So sometimes I've run into patients that we use steroids for other health conditions, and all of a sudden, the whole cat household will start breaking with a respiratory infection. Mm-hmm. And what it can do is, um, if a pet has been previously exposed to Khaleesi virus, herpes virus, it kind of hides in the body, and they may not be sick. But when we suppress their immune system with a steroid, it actually brings that out, and we can see sn- uh, sneezing, coughing cats, and it won't be just that cat. It'll, they can actually reactivate that virus and spread it to the other cats in the home. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's one reason we're not really, I'm not particularly uh, very free with giving steroids to um, sneezing, coughing cats. It's got to be a pretty pretty um, overwhelming uh, reason for that. Yeah, I mean, it, whatever, I don't know, it could have been that or it could have been the moxicillin that was helping it because I was giving it both, like, every day. 
And most respiratory infections, these viral respiratory infections, if we do nothing in the average cat within seven to ten days, they'll, they'll get better. Yeah. So, so that too, you know, if we look at okay. that timeline. Okay. Well, I'm well, glad your kitties are all better, and um, you just keep watching that respiratory stuff and make sure we don't have snifflers or sneezers there. Sneezers, sneezers. One eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. Is that like a sneeze and a seizure at the same time? A sneezer. Doctor Debbie. Mm-hmm. Is that a new lab coat you're wearing? It's mighty becoming. Are you, are you trying to flatter me for some reason, Alan? No, no. Yeah, I want to be bottle fed. <laughs> you know, the kind of bottle you want to drink from, I don't think we're going to be able to uh, allow you to have during the day hours. <laughs> just, uh, I love a woman in a lab coat. I just love that. So dedicated to your work. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Geico presents a man who just saved on his motorcycle insurance. Name's Mark, and this here beastly hog is Princess. Easy, Princess. Slow your roll. So how does this chopper cowboy save on motorcycle insurance, you ask? Easy. I just strapped on my savings chaps called Geico and bam. I'm saving so much, my princess, well, she gets treated like a queen. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. What do you think about when you're driving? Music? Sports? We think about nice, big, fluffy piles of insulation and filters and motor suspension and water projection and things like that. We're Bosch, and we are the quietest dishwasher brand in the U.S. You could say we wrote the book on quiet, and the next chapter is flexibility. Nearly every Bosch dishwasher now features a third rack that holds silverware and whisks and tongs and spatulas and increases your loading area up to 30%. How did we do it? Well, as we said, we're Bosch. We think about things like that. Come see what we've invented for you. See the complete line of Bosch dishwashers at Best Buy or visit bestbuy.com slash Bosch. Quietest dishwasher brand in the U.S. based on an average of sound ratings on major brands' websites. Major brands defined as Trackline Top 10 Brands, March 2013. 30% more loading area compared to a Bosch dishwasher with two racks. Okay, you ready? I'm going to let go of the bike now. Wait, not yet, Dad. No, just keep pedaling. You've got it. Don't let go. Don't let go. There are moments in life that cause us to hesitate. I already did. You're doing it. Woohoo! I'm doing it. But once we take action, we're awfully glad we did. Markets are changing, and interest rates are still low. If you're thinking about getting into the real estate market, now may be the time to make your move. Every market's different. Call a Realtor today and visit Realtor.com. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. Is underwritten by the fine folks at FlexRx. Like people, as dogs get older, arthritis is the most common problem they face. And FlexRx doesn't just mask those symptoms, it restores natural joint function. FlexRx is available at Pet Supplies Plus. And we go to who who are we going to there, Judith? We're gonna go to line two and speak to Rachel. Hey Rachel. Hi. How are you doing? What's going on? Um, I'm I'm going crazy. <laughs> I, <laughs> Aren't we all, girl? Aren't I, we all? I have two large dogs that refuse to be contained anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh at you, sweetie pie. Oh, no, no, trust me. That's all I can do. It's either laugh or cry. <laughs> so what, what do you mean they refuse to be contained? Well, I had I got this house and it's got a huge backyard, and I put them out while I'm at work. Well, there's dogs on the other side of the fence. They're trying to get under the fence or through the fence. Through the fence, under the fence. They want at them though. They want those dogs, don't they? Oh yes. Or they yeah, want so, the people let... walking on the other side of the fence near the canal, or they want the chickens in the back part of the fence. Yeah. On the other side of that fence, it, it's okay. So we've been fighting this battle for a while. And we keep right. patching the holes, and we keep patching the fence. So finally I said, I'm going to build a new fence about <laughs> three feet away from the original fence. <laughs> you know, girlfriend, there is no fence that can contain a dog. Do you know that? And, and in my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, I don't like to let my dog out unaccompanied in the backyard until I've taught him 
uh, with patience and leadership and kindness and consistency over time, uh, the rules, what I want, what I expect, and distracted him and taught him, hey, this is what I want, this is what you, what I don't want you to do. And, you know, you got a big problem. There's no easy solution to your problem. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, because they get so emotional that they got to let their dogs out in the yard and they don't want to contain their dogs, they don't want to lock their dogs up. And so they're not around to actually lead and teach. And when you're not al- around to lead, teach, and distract, well, dogs get into trouble. You know, they, they just they, they want to go after those other dogs because they interpret those dogs as uh, they want them to go away. You know, hey, you're on my turf. Go away. So, so you know why they're doing what they're doing. The question is how to stop it. And the only way to stop it, I mean, there are little things you could do. You could put like a, uh, gosh, a cedar along the fence or bricks along the fence so they can't dig. Or some people have tried mothballs, which are dangerous. You gotta make sure the dog can't get them. Uh, what they do is they put them in a can and they put little holes in the can because dogs hate the scent of mothballs. Uh, but if they eat them, you know, it's poison. So you gotta be careful with yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, in what'd you say, honey? I'm sorry. I said no. I don't want to do that. Oh, it gets worse, by the way. <laughs> How does it get worse? So I put up the new fence. They broke off the pickets, the top of the pickets, so they could jump over that fence to get to the That's original right. fence and continue digging. That makes sense. So then I brought them in the house. I have a, kind of a duplex. It's two houses. It's connected by a door, but the back house is is vacant right now. So I thought, okay, fine. I'll lock them in the back house while I'm at work. They broke down the door and ripped off the door jam to get to my house. I I have some questions for you. First of all, we had the same problem with Hal, and it it took many, many months of training. Yeah, long time. It's a long time. Long time. Probably more than a dog. Yeah, much more much more time than a dog. My my question to you is this. How long are you gone each day? Um, I have four jobs. Wow. So, yeah. so why did you get dogs? I'm curious. Well, no, why no, did no. you? Uh... After, when I got them, I only had the one job, and I was a stay at home. I was a caregiver in the right. home. Gotcha. But so he has since uh, been put in a nursing home, and my boyfriend was here, but he got kicked out. How much do you know about why your dogs do what they do? Um, I understand why. It still doesn't change the fact. But I can't yeah. have them do it? Yeah, you can't have them do it. But how can you prevent them? How can you stop them? You see, if you're not around, you know, and you don't want to kennel them, then there's really no way for you to stop them. You well, know, I, uh, do, you know some I do people... kennel them at night, and that's kind of where I was going with that of going, I don't want to kennel them all day and then kennel them all night, too. First things first, uh, I understand what you're going through. Now you have to understand how you can change it and to do that you have to listen it's very 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 complicated it's not simple and yet it really isn't complicated you know your dogs need stimulation they need exercise they need time with you and if you're not there to give your dogs time and if you're not there to exercise your dogs and socialize your dogs around other dogs and teach them what it is is right and what it is is not right desirable and undesirable there is no solution you see there's no magic solution people want a magic solution they want a pill there is no pill it's it's complicated it takes time to change dogs and their behaviors you just can't say hey Hey, how can I fix this? It's a long process, and you have to be there. There's no other way to do it. You have to be there. You have to be outside with your dogs when they're out, and as soon as they make their move to do the crazy behavior, you've got to distract them. you got to take their mind off of it. Some people throw a can of coins right at their feet. Some people slam kitchen drawers. Some people make a loud dog whistle noise with some object that they have or turn a power drill on. You, you, un, you, you, you focus their mind on something completely different because once they get in that state of mind, you know, a, a correction probably isn't going to work. So you got to refocus them. And then you have to understand how to give them corrections, and then you have to understand how to reinforce the positive behavior with rewards and saying, good boy, when they're doing what you want. And over time, they start to figure out, oh, okay, she don't want me digging, and she doesn't want me uh, pulling the fence down and going after these other dogs, and I'm going to do it because I respect her, and she's a leader. She's my leader, and I'm going to follow her. And that takes time. And you have to be with the dogs to do these things. They don't do any of this bad stuff while I'm here. They're beautiful while I'm here. It's when I leave that they go completely nuts. Well, if they don't do anything while you're there, then they do respect you. 
and the only solution for you is you've got to kennel them when you're not there. Why do you kennel them at night? I'm not here. So you're never there? No, no, no. I'm Like, I'm home right now, and they're both out and about. But um, I work 12 to 6, 7 to 10, and then okay. I work... Well, here's what you got to do, girl. You, to here's four. what you got to do, girl. When you are home, you're going to have to every single day take these dogs for a bike ride, whatever it is. You know, attach the leashes to your bicycle, and you're going to have to tire them out. I mean, exhaust them. And then if you okay. do that for about a half hour, 45 minutes a day, they're not going to mind being kenneled because they're just gonna, dogs love to sleep. They love their kennel. When you're home, you let them out. You exercise them, you spend time with them, you correct them if they're doing bad behavior in the backyard, but you cannot let them be in the backyard by themselves because there is no magic fix. A lot of people think, oh, I'll get an electric fence, you know? Uh, that can yeah, do so much more. Yeah, that to me, too, and I didn't want, I'm like, no, I'm not electrocuting my dogs. Well, you know, you don't have to electrocute them, but the point is I agree with you because most people don't understand how to use these things properly, and, and you can get all kinds of problems. You can cause all kinds of problems with electricity. Uh, the dog will not make the association correctly unless you're around to teach him. Again, it's all about teaching. Hey, listen, I want to dedicate today's show to you, Rachel, because you work four jobs. That is amazing. Yeah, okay. And to everyone that's working four jobs or even three jobs, you're good people keeping this country moving. one 866 405 8405 is toll free. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1 866 405 8405. Animal Radio is brought to you by Natural Balance Pet Food, the finest food you can buy for the health of your pet. No matter which line of Natural Balance Pet Food you choose, you know it will truly be the food for a lifetime. Visit www.naturalbalance.net to learn more. Hi, I'm Dick Van Patten. And I'm Jimmy Van Patten. And we're here to talk to you about our new line of alpha grain-free dog and cat formulas. And we've been the leaders in grain-free nutrition with our LID formulas before grain-free became a trend. Our new grain-free alpha formulas combine multiple high-quality proteins at balanced levels with unique fruits and vegetables for vitamins and antioxidants. For more information on alpha and all of my dog and cat food formulas, visit naturalbalanceinc.com. For dogs, like people, arthritis is the most common health problem, and joints are stressed even more with increased activity in summer. FlexRx is a new way to safely and effectively treat canine joint health problems. All-natural FlexRx doesn't mask symptoms like other products. It's clinically proven to restore healthy joint function. With FlexRx, your dogs can enjoy an improved quality of life they've earned and deserve. Flex RX is available at Pet Supplies Plus or visit ProLabsPets.com. Suffering from allergy congestion? On my nature walks, I couldn't smell the flowers or breathe in the fresh spring air. Then I discovered Allegra D. Allegra D decongests and depressurizes with a fast, non-drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant for 24 hours of congestion-free breathing. Now I don't just appreciate nature. I breathe it all in. Allegra D. Stop suffering. Start breathing. Look for Allegra D at the pharmacy counter. Starts working in one hour. Use only as directed. Visit Allegra.com. Right now, until March 18th, the flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have huge deals going to fit any taste or budget, like quality laminates for an amazing 39 cents a square foot, versatile engineered hardwood for just $169, even spectacular Bellawood pre-finished Bolivian rosewood for an incredible $299 a square foot. Pick up free samples at hundreds of stores nationwide, plus special financing available and easy professional installation or expert advice for DIYers. But hurry, this sale ends March 18th. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. This is an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies with thousands of quality products at low prices every day so you save on every order. Visit fosterandsmith.com. I'm Stacy Cohen for Animal Radio. I don't know about you, but my dog always barks at the mailman. There's something about the mailman that just drives my dogs crazy. In fact, they will not even deliver mail at my house. I had to get a P.O. box because when I used to have a big uh, German Shepherd Border Collie mix, he would always go after him. But dogs seem to go postal in L.A. more than any other U.S. city. The U.S. Postal Service released its rankings of the best and worst cities for dog attacks on mail carriers. L.A. recorded 69 incidents last year. San Antonio and Seattle round out the top three worst cities. Wichita, Kansas, that is the safest city with just 20 attacks. So if you want to be a mailman, stay away from the dogs. 
Wichita, Kansas is where you need to go. Almost 6,000 postal workers were attacked by dogs. An old video posted online could cause some new problems for two Florida men, one of which is seen jumping on top of a manatee and her calf. It's right here. Look, it's a huge one. Let me get, hey, sure. Oh, there's two of them. Should I do it? Let's do it. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Drop it. Let's do it. You ready? Get him, Kevin. Get one. <laughs> what an idiot. The video was first posted on Facebook about a year ago, but now the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is launching an investigation. Officers have already identified the men in the video and say they could face state and federal charges for harassing the endangered mammals. Residents in Fort Worth, Texas, are gearing up to scare away egrets before they nest. Last year, the egrets invaded neighborhoods, leaving behind mm, droppings that filled the air with flies and turned some lawns brown. Because the egrets are protected by the Federal Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918, those giant birds can't be disturbed as they nest. This year, residents, though, are taking some preventative action and arming themselves with air horns and bells to scare off the giant birds if they fly around looking for places to build nests. Bill Campbell, who's president of the Tanglewood Neighborhood Association, tells the Fort Worth Star-Telegram that people don't want the birds to get comfortable nesting in their neighborhoods. He added that residents will probably have to scare off the birds every year. In the future, some neighborhoods are looking into building areas where the egrets can nest in peace. Wildlife Protection Group wants to work on a freeway project in Petaluma, California. Stop because it's uh, causing the deaths of swallows there that nest in the bridge. The Press Democrat says uh, concerns around the construction at the Highway 101 bridge right over the Petaluma River. The wildlife advocates say federally protected cliff swallows build mud nests in that bridge and Caltrans efforts to keep those birds away is allegedly killing the birds instead. So they're asking a federal judge to stop the work and force Caltrans to do additional environmental studies before they resume construction. I'm Stacy Cohen. Get more animal breaking news at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies. Visit FosterAndSmith.com for pet supplies selected by veterinarians with 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Doctors Foster and Smith, your trusted source for quality, affordable pet supplies. Veterinarian owned with veterinary expertise behind every product. Doctors Foster and Smith has thousands of name brand pet products, including pet medications, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day, so you save on every order with free shipping on orders $49 or more. Fast service delivered right to your door. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. What dog food is specifically designed to reduce the risk of cancer, settle digestive upsets, reduce scratching and shedding? Canine caviar. What dog food reduces red tear stains and hot spots? Canine caviar. What dog food has probiotics that reduce the chance of soft stools and have a higher calorie count for better nutrient absorption? Canine caviar. So what are you feeding your dog? If you didn't answer Canine Caviar, visit CanineCaviar.com today and get your pet started on a longer, healthier life. Really? No way. Hey, I'm Eric from Sam Adams, here to get craft beer drinkers' reaction as they secretly taste Sam Adams' Boston Lager. It's got a good body. It's got a great taste. It's very smooth. I, I like that. You think you've had this beer before? No. This is Sam Adams' Boston Lager. Sam Adams! <laughs> I was going to yes. say Sam Adams. That's easy to drink. It's tasty. It's a very flavorful, drinkable beer. Smooth, but it does have flavor. I love a Boston Lager. What this test did is it put Sam Adams back on the map for me. Boston Beer Company, Boston Mass, it was Boston Beer. Right now, until March 18th, the flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have huge deals going to fit any taste or budget, like quality laminates for an amazing 39 cents a square foot, versatile engineered hardwood for just $169, even spectacular Bellawood pre-finished Bolivian rosewood for an incredible $2.99 a square foot. Pick up free samples at hundreds of stores nationwide, plus special financing available and easy professional installation or expert advice for DIYers. But hurry, this sale ends March 18th. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. This is Animal Radio, baby. It's Animal Radio, toll free, 
one 405 8405 Love to hear from you. Don't forget, you can also ask your questions of the Dream Team using the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. It's a free download. I encourage you to go over and download it right now. This next guy is a dentist. You spent a lot of time at the dentist this week, Oh, uh, you? you know what? I don't think I'm finished either. I'm still in pain, so I, from you, my root canal, I don't even want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about it, no. okay. Well, imagine this guy. He He's not in the likes of your mouth. He's in the likes of bears, grizzlies, orangutans, Ooh. wild dogs. He's a dentist for these wild animals. And we welcome wow. him to the airwaves, Dr. Peter Emily. Hi, Doc. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very excited to speak to you. I've I've heard so much about what you do, and I just realized Dr. Debbie here knows you. How do you know each other? I would have to say, um, practicing in Las Vegas, I have had many a case uh, go over to to see Dr. Emily through the years, and uh, and I I will correct you, Alan or uh, Hal. He is both a human and a, a veterinary dentist. Oh, is that true? I oh, did not wow. realize that. Yeah, I have a couple of degrees. A lot of degrees, not much money, but a lot of degrees. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> sorry. So huh. now, did you start as a human dentist and then move over, or do you practice both? Or did you practice well, both? I'm at, at the point now where I said I, uh, I work on uh, everything that has a mouth, uh, <laughs> <laughs> including people, dogs, birds, cats, reptiles, snakes, whatever it is, elephants, snakes. rhinos, hippos, I've worked on them all. Well, I can't imagine. Would you, what, would you, what would you do with a snake? A root canal? The, the, the snakes are funny. The ones, that, the ones that I worked on were setting mandibular fractures, broken jaws, and usually from uh, uh, trauma, either from uh, someone running over their head or some uh, one of the uh, one of the addicts out there kicking them in the face and breaking their jaws and things like that. Wow. So an owner would actually come in and say. Fix my snake who's been run over? Fix my snake, yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. When I would, not a lot of them, but every now and then you get one of those. <laughs> wow. Well, you, your waiting room must be ridiculous, and your and your dental <laughs> hygienist must be in, a, in the asylum by now. <laughs> yeah, I, I just kind of just have have gun, will travel. You know, I have all my... Uh, all of my instruments are all packaged, and I just go wherever they, where the occasion takes me. Whether what? it's in Brazil or Africa, or I was in... Uh, Namibia working on cheetahs. I think we worked on about 50 or 60 cheetahs over there and must have done, I don't know, 100 root canals out there in, in, the, in, the, in the dirt and so forth like that. So it's a, it's a different thing. I think there wasn't 50, I think there were 60 cheetahs that we worked on. Wow. Now, you know, I could tell the dentist when I needed a root canal. I knew my tooth started hurting, but how do you know when an animal needs a root canal? Well, these, these cheetahs were kept in a sanctuary there and, uh, very big. I mean, their sanctuaries aren't like ours. They're uh, measured in hectares, you know, 2.2 acres. Per hectare, or 2.5, I think it is. But uh, and there's 100,000 hectares, so you know how big that is. It's uh, 200 and some, almost 300,000 acres. Wow. And they go out there and they capture them and they bring them in and they just they bring, bring them in at random. They have no idea, maybe a little bit as to what's wrong with them. And there's probably only five or six of them we actually released back into the wild that didn't have dental disease of some kind. So they're susceptible to a lot of fracture and everything. And uh, you know, they, uh, we worked on, I don't know if I'm preempting what you're trying to ask, but just tell me some of the crazy things we've done. Oh, please. No, we hear it. So we, uh, we left there and I dropped out into South Africa, South America, went into Namibia and worked on, uh, one of the, uh, one of the shelters down there. I worked on, I think it was a dozen jaguars and, uh, and probably just as many, uh, bush dogs. The bush dogs are kind of an endangered species. They have different uh, numbers of teeth than most carnivores, so they're a little bit different. They're a little squatty, look like a, about the size of a corgi, but they're they're really not dogs as we know them. Hmm. They're a little bit different, but they're just there's not many of them left. From there, we went into uh, Brazil and a couple of sanctuaries there and worked on a, on a I think another jaguar and a, and a hippo. And the hippo had uh, a hippo had a big problem. The problem with some of these sanctuaries, they just don't know how to take care of them as you find them in the wild. They don't floss uh, them every day, I don't think. Well, that's it. Flossing is really a human thing because our teeth are, are kind of cuboidal. They're set up like, like they're square. And mm. we have those teeth in close contact. And to get the area between the teeth, that's when you drop the the, the, uh, the floss down in there. But most of the carnivores have blade-type type teeth, you know. There's open spaces there, so nothing packs in between that and those blades. So they don't have to floss. There's... This the way they're built. So is still the anatomy of the tooth pretty much the same no matter what animal? No, no, no. That's that's a problem. Uh, I don't know if she told you, but I have a, a sanctuary, a, a foundation, I should say. It's uh, called the Peter Emily International Veterinary Dental Foundation. What I do is uh, we take care of all these animals in shelters and sanctuaries. Uh, it's all pro bono to take care of all of their dental disease. And, and 
the United States alone, I think there's probably 20, 30,000 wild animals in the United States alone in about a thousand different shelters and sanctuaries. Wow. That has nothing to do with zoo animals. These are just animals, whatever you can find in a zoo, you can find in a shelter and a sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I take a team with me to go there and do the work. Uh, I can't address all of them, so we bring a lot of uh, people in the College of Veterinary Dentistry as interns with us so they can uh, kind of uh, bring it up to speed and what it's like to work on something besides dogs and cats, show them the differences, and maybe hopefully send them out to another shelter or sanctuary to work on it. Mm-hmm. So a teacher becomes a teacher becomes a teacher type thing to mm-hmm. take care of all of them. Did you have any incidences where uh, the anesthesia wore off too early? Uh-oh. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Uh, I was just telling uh, Suzanne, she's my, my the, the, the power to be that runs this shelter in sanctuary. We said that uh, I was. We were talking about they wanted to do a book. They've been trying to do a book on some of my my travels and things I've started because no one did animal dentistry before me. I started that whole crazy thing going back. Just see, I'm only 28 years old now. So yeah. I just had to <laughs> <laughs> so it started many many years ago, but 40 40 some years ago, 40. 45, wow. something like that. But the uh, I remember one time I was called two crazy incidences. I went back into the, uh, the zoo back east, and uh, there was a big run on polar bears and had needing root canal therapy. And uh, when we were back there at the well, this one polar bear, they, they always tell you, or they always want you to do whatever you have to do right then so you don't have to re-anesthetize them. In other words, make sure that what you've done is it's all that they need to do and they're not going to have any trouble with it in the future. Sure. Well, if you see a, an abscess tooth, it's a... Uh, it's kind of infected and it's draining on the outside. We call that a fistula. Well, you want to do the root canal. If you think of a root canal, kind of a little tangent here. It's like corking a bottle. Yeah. You can clean out everything inside and cork it so what's left inside can't get out, and it's fine. So what we're thinking is, so this way we've got to cork the bottle from the bottom up like your dentist would do, but then you've got to go in surgically from the top and cork it in the back of the root, the top of the root, so make sure nothing gets out. So it's a double cork. You know, it's like corking the bottle from the bottom and the top. Uh-huh. And so you make a big incision to go through that, you know, in order to get into it surgically after you've done the other part. And I was just starting to sew the, put the sew, sew up the suture, the opening surgical site, and uh, Bear started to wake up, and he says, we got to get had a hard time keeping him under the seat. He says, you got to go. I said, well, go ahead. So they put him on the cart, and they said, wheeling him out. I'm riding on top of the bear, suturing him up. So they all the way over to his enclosure. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Well, this, let me give out the website. We're running out of time. You have so many great stories to tell. And I'm sure you're going to find out more information at the website at PeterEmilyFoundation.org. PeterEmilyFoundation.org, yeah, Foundation. yes. Yeah. And I'll put links to uh, everything you put on today's show over at AnimalRadio.com. Thank you, Doctor. Take care. Okay. That's guys fascinating. He is. He is really the grandfather. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Hey, this is Caesar Milan. When I'm not doing the dog whisper, I'm listening to Animal Radio. Stay balanced. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Vinny Penn, Party Animal. I'm just going to come right out and say it. My sister and my brother-in-law killed the family pet and ate it for dinner. <laughs> and ate it for dinner. I'm just going to say it with with my nephews, my two small nephews. Uh, if that's not further proof of uh, the economy being in turmoil, as if any of you needed it, I don't know what is. Killing the family pet and eating it for dinner? You heard right. But I guess I should explain that the uh, family pet at the time, and just for a few days, was a lobster. Uh, get a load of this. My nephew has just uh, begun fancying lobster. My sister tells me recently on the phone that they went out for a seafood dinner. He tried lobster for the first time, and he loved it. So me being the good uncle that I am, uh, and a big fan of lobster gram. I don't know how many of you out there are familiar with lobster gram. You can go right online and, and send like a variety of different meals, you know, chowders and ste- even steaks and things like that. But of course, uh, seafood and namely, obviously lobsters. I said, I'm going to be the good uncle, Uncle Vinny, even though they call me Uncle Sam, but that's a real long story. So I sent them out a, a little small order of, of uh, lobsters for the family. 
Well, my sister's got the bright idea. She's going to open the box, open the crate when it shows up, uh, with the boys. And when they see that the live lobster in there that was sent, along with some chowders, as I said, and whatnot, uh, the kids scream in, in ecstasy and immediately n- named him Plankton. <laughs> uh, and my sister and my brother let him know what to do. They're like, they, they, they think it's a pet. They're calling him Plankton. The, the, just, they, they can't process that the lobster they've eaten at restaurants, even though it looks n- exactly the same, just not moving, uh, is what they're going to, and they would never hear of eating it. So for three days, they had to kind of let the lobster hang around. Well, I don't know if it was three days. I'm kind of running a mock right now. And then ultimately do what all parents do and lie that Plankton ran away one day while they were at school. But, hey, lobsters for dinner tonight. We got it from them. They just kind of uh, served it in a way that the kids didn't know they were eating Plankton. Am I the bad guy in this? Because my sister screamed at me when we opened the crate. We didn't know it would be alive. It was waving its arms at us. And this, What am I going to send you, a dead lobster? Uh, that's what Italians do when they're threatening your life. Uh, uh, of course it's going to be alive. It's, it's a lobster, Graham. Am I going to send you a dead lobster? Uh, and she said they had to let it crawl around on the carpets for a while. And the kids were playing with it because, of course, the claws were... Uh, they're closed up with elastic bands and whatnot, and I'm made to look at the bad guy. And now, of course, the children think that Plankton made his way all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada to Reno and is living a good life on a farm somewhere with Sonny, my sister's uh, collie that died a couple of years back. Plankton and Sonny. Sounds like a Fox TV show. Vinnie Pen, Party Animal, Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Okay, now be honest. When you were a kid, did you ever burn ants with a magnifying glass? I didn't really burn them. No, I put them into little containers and let them live and watch them. I didn't kill them. Good. No, I like, I like to collect them and just kind of carry them around in like little lockets and things. <laughs> <laughs> so you, it, it, it makes sense then, doesn't it? <laughs> what about you, Ellen? Did you do that as a kid? Yes, I think I did, Hell. <laughs> <laughs> what are you asking? Well, I see here in the paper studies uh, about ants show that when facing oncoming floodwaters, ants use their helpless babies as floating life preservers. <laughs> what? <laughs> ants are, ants are uh, you know, they're, they're just ruthless. They really are. Wow. If they, they were as big as us, we wouldn't exist. No, it's clever, so. though. So it's the young ants, it's the baby ants. That, that are they're on the using bottom. Their body. They get <laughs> flooded and they get eaten by fish. Oh, so they're sacrificing their young. Sacrificing yeah. their young. Wow. I wish I could do that. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> yes, I wish I could do that to my, my middle one. My middle one's the one I'm after. <laughs> How old is she or he? She's 13. Uh-oh. That's that's a horrible age. I, yeah, I was, no, tell me about it. I was all kinds of rebel at 13, I'll tell you that right now. Well, and girls are definitely far worse than boys, I have to say. Oh, you know. oh it's horrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she hates I me. can admit it. <laughs> She's grossed out by me. That's normal. I think at that age, girls just, they think their parents are ridiculously stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, the, you, you would disgust her. That makes sense. I was embarrassed yeah. of my impar- parents at that age. I would ask them to drop me off a block away from school. That's what I'd do. Let's hit the phones at one 405 8405 This portion of Animal Radio has been underwritten by Litter Robot, which automatically cleans the cat litter for you. You don't need any special supplies. Wrong one? I'm yes. reading the wrong one. Yes, you are. Yeah. This portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Kitty Agogo, bringing you six attractive litter box options in colorful designs, especially suited for smaller homes or apartments where the traditional litter box is an eyesore. It's available at kittyagogo.com. That's kittyagogo.com. Uh, hey, Carrie. Hi. Where are you calling from today? From Bellingham. Washington? Yes. Oh, it is so beautiful up there. What's going on? Oh, it's snowing up here. Is it? <laughs> well, you stay warm. Is there something wrong with your animals? Yeah, I have a shepherd Akita. He's about um, 11 years old. And in the last maybe, what, 
maybe four months or so, sort of getting progressively worse, he's um, started going to the bathroom on the floor. He'll poop on the floor. And mm-hmm. um, and he's got two, two metal knees. We had two different knee replacements for the back. So at first I thought it was that he didn't want to go, have to go down the steps in the back to go out to the yard. And it was just sort of a, this is my preference. I'd rather not go out. But mm-hmm. um, he'll he'll go on his bed now, and it's gotten worse, so it's more than once a day. And it sort of, he'll stand up and then start moving, and it's almost like he doesn't know what's going to happen, and then mm-hmm. it does. And so I don't know if it's because he's in pain or if there's something else going on or what I should do. Okay. Well, and for the knee surgeries he's had, did he have ruptured ligaments in his knees? Um, he had... Let's see. He he had oh I forget the name of the surgery. It's like the three letter acronym something TPLO? replacement. So he had he tore okay. his meniscus and okay. yeah. um and then just like threw out his knee completely. So they had to yeah they had to like rebuild the joint. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's further down. So not likely to be relating to um, continence problems. And and I will be honest, he is in an age where we do sometimes see age-related incontinence issues. And some of them we can't do a lot for medically. The ones that we may be able to help and to, to help manage are those that are going to be based upon some kind of pain or discomfort that we can better control. So when, um, when I have a dog that's um, kind of having fecal incontinence, the first thing I like to do is take an x-ray of the lower spine area, kind of the hips and the lower spine. And the reason mm-hmm. is, is that if we have any kind of disc narrowing, any kind of spinal disease, then I can say, aha, we might be able to manage your pet's discomfort, even if he's not crying, um, with different medications or other therapies. So for lower spine disease, I have kind of a whole gamut of things that I'll pull out. Um, mm-hmm. One of them would be pain medicines like gabapentin or tramadol. Um, they can be helpfully with nerve-derived pain. Um, I, I actually, in my office, we started using a therapeutic laser and had some phenomenal results with treating um, pets with arthritis in the spine or other joints or what have you. And, and that's something that, just like with people, it can definitely help decrease inflammation mm-hmm. and improve mobility. The other things beyond that, I might even look at acupuncture. If if we find that we have a lower spine disease that we might be able to work mm-hmm. with. And, and then there's other traditional, you know, non-steroidal pain relievers, things like that. But that would be the okay. first kind of direction I would look at to see if he's a candidate for that kind of thing. If okay. not, um, and I can tell you, um, I have a 12-year-old Labrador who has some mild fecal incontinence. It, it usually occurs just when he starts walking. Yeah. My former Labrador, it would kind of happen at all times. So when we're dealing with that, if we don't have pain, then sometimes I might manage things with diet changes. So um, one remedy I tried for my female dog was to go to a lower residue or lower bulk food. Doesn't necessarily change the continence, but it can decrease the volume of feces that we might have to deal with. And that might make a difference for some pets. Okay. Um, so that might be one thing to look at. Um, and most of those kind of foods, you'd need to talk to your veterinarian just to get a recommendation on you know, what they have. Um, I, I okay. used one, I used one called Low Residue by the IAMS company. And, and that kind of helped a little bit, but for, for my dogs and my geriatric dogs, it truly was a matter of old dog incontinence and, and we really yeah. dealt with it as best as we could um and, and i do have some folks will say you know should i put diapers on my dog and i think that i, I would caution folks about that because it can be a double-edged sword it can contain yeah, the feces totally. <laughs> yeah but then you can run into you know the basically diaper rash and, and infection yeah. so you kind of have to watch that so yeah that might be well worth it just you know having the, the lower spine checked out and, and, and see if if there's anything else we can be doing because wow you know 11 years old for an akita shepherd that's that is definitely a respectable age yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if that helps you there, Carrie, give us a that call does. back. does. Thank you very much. You have yourself a good day. Stay warm up there, okay? Okay, thanks. I bet it's beautiful, idyllic. She's probably sitting in front of a fireplace with snow outside her window right now. 
show. 1-866-405-8405 to talk to the Dream Team. Dr. Debbie's here. Dog trainer Alan Cable. Dog father Joey Volani stuck in Denver today. Apparently a victim. Being contained. Of, yeah, being, being contained, contained in, in Denver. Detained. Yes. Is it detained? Yeah, Is he's he? being detained. By Is NSA? it TSA? It Does TSA, TSA have him? Trying to smuggle his clippers through security. <laughs> You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White, dog trainer Alan Cable, groomer Joey Villani, communicator Joy Turner, and here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. This hour, we are going to talk to a, an owner of an octopus. That's her pet. She wanted an octopus as a pet. She got one. I think that would be so cool. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I want the jellyfish as pets, the kind that you know you go to the aquarium and you see the lights behind them. And they look so soothing. Well, they're pretty high maintenance, I understand. We'll find out more in just a few minutes. I think she has to have a 55-gallon tank for this octopus that she has. I'm not sure. But yeah, you would think a minimum. Huge. Yeah. Huge. I can't imagine why. They're just not furry and cuddly. I wouldn't want to cuddle up at night with an octopus. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, in just a couple of minutes, we'll be checking news also. And Stacey Cohn, what do you got going on? Well, one of the hazards of being a postal worker is you can get bit by dogs a lot. In fact, postal workers carry, um, I think they carry pepper spray to, to scare the dogs away. I know mine did. My Oh, my God. One year, my mailman sprayed my dogs and... Um, my kids went ballistic on the guy. <laughs> they almost bit him. Anyway, there are some safe cities if you're a postal worker where you won't get bit. And then there's some not-so-safe cities. And I'll give you the list coming up on Animal Radio News. I cannot wait. Let's go to Norman. Hey, Norman, how are you? Great. How are you doing? Very good. Where are you calling from today? Uh, Costa Mesa, California. The lovely L.A. area. or Orange County. That's Orange County, isn't it? Just south of yeah, that, yeah, it's Orange County, right by the Orange County market. Well, Judy's telling me that you're an inventor? Yeah, yeah my wife and I uh, became inventors a couple of years ago. What, what, kind of what not, it, not planning so. <laughs> not planning to be a, sort of an accidental invention? Uh, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly how it happened. What happened? What is it? What did you invent? Well, basically, my wife was bugging me for quite some time about wanting to get a cat. And, well, quite honestly, I was more of a dog person, but uh, she persisted, and I made a made a comment that if we want to get a cat, that she had a promise to clean the litter box herself, and she did. And so we got I got her a cat for her birthday. And wouldn't you know it, it was about a day later that I found myself in front of a litter box scooping up <laughs> all these nice presents. <laughs> Funny how that works, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And actually, I come to find out after uh, going through that that um, you know, litter boxes are the number one reason that cats are returned to shelters because you know, mom and dad buy Susie or Johnny a cat with a promise that they're going to clean it, and then uh, they end up not doing it, and then the cat ends up back in the shelter again. Yeah. So, so, so you you have a solution to this problem? What what have you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, our solution is called the uh, Cats of Thrones. Um, shameless plug: catsofthrones dot com. It's a toilet seat for cats. A toilet uh, seat for we cats. Don't actually, yeah, we don't actually try to get a cat to use a human seat. We actually have designed a seat that goes underneath the human seat, and it provides comfort, stability, support for the cat. And the best thing of all right now, we have a 100% success rate with every cat ever on the system. Really? Well, this is cool. Now, my wife is always complaining that my aim is off. Uh, with this, <laughs> will the will the cat's aim be any better? What? How does this work? What does it look like? Explain. Since this is radio, I'll hold up a picture, but I, I think you should explain. Well, and I, actually, you know, um, even for your aiming problem, I can fix that, too, because if you... Uh, <laughs> If you follow the steps in the system, there's a small. We start off with a full litter box. We use our own dissolving cat litter, uh -huh. and our, our litter box has drainage holes in it. So all you got to do is uh, you bring your litter box from wherever it is in the house, get it into the bathroom, have it sit next to the toilet for about one week. Then you attach our system, uh, put our dissolving cat litter in there, sprinkle one tablespoon of your old cat litter on top of our cat litter. That establishes the odor for the cat. And then about a week or two later, you open up a hole in the center of our uh, of our box on, on top of the toilet. And, by the way, that hole is a perfect aiming, aiming uh, area for, for young men and boys. <laughs> um, but then that hole just progressively gets larger. 
And as it gets larger, the cats uh, begin to walk out towards a, on a platform that we have specially designed within our seat. So by the end stage, or stage six, it's a, a six-stage system, the last stage of the system, there's no litter, no drainage. It just has a, a platform for the cat to stand on, and they make it in the hole every time. Well, see, I can imagine they'd want to scratch and cover it. Well, yeah, the, the scratching sensation is virtually eliminated by the time they get to about stage four. Uh, reason being is that you know, the reason that cats are scratching so much is to try and do, uh, you know, get rid of that odor. Uh-huh. And what, what cats begin to realize with this system is as everything's going into the water, the water displaces that odor better than, than any cat litter that I've ever found on the market. Yeah. Hmm. The cat's scratching I- sensation just virtually goes away because they realize that they don't smell anything anymore. How long does it take to go from step one to step seven, training the, your cat to well, do that? You know, it, it, it varies on from, uh, obviously, the cat's behavior. Some cats like water, others are a little bit apprehensive with it. But uh, we've seen cats go from as quick as three and a half, four weeks. Uh, that was actually our first cat. Our, our second cat took five months. And we actually have cat shelters now that have 25 cats, and they use it with two restrooms. Wow. Well, i got to tell you right now that I already have to wait for two girls <laughs> and my wife to get into the bathroom. And now it would be, the how many, we have four cats, so yeah. I could never get into it. I, I need to get a house with a second bathroom is what I need. To, this is a great idea. Cat of Thrones is the website, is that correct? Yeah, cats, uh, so plural, C-A-T-S-O-F. Thrones, catsofthrones.com. All kinds of interesting people listening to Animal Radio. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, heard your, we heard your show just as we were actually going to a, uh, a pet show in Orange County, and we heard your show, and uh, we had to give you a call about it. Well, so, so what's next? Yeah. yeah what's next? Uh, you're going to see us on Hassan on TV and across the country and in about four major retailers. I won't give up the names yet, but you'll see them here in a few months because it's, uh, it's really taken off for us. Well, you keep me posted. We should get one in here and try uh, the, the cats. Yeah, I put it in the men's bathroom. I'm not putting it in the women's. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks so much for hanging with us, talking with us, and giving us a call, and listening to Animal Radio. All right. Look forward to it. I'll, I'll, I'll be listening. Thanks Take a lot. one 405 8405 We have all kinds of listeners calling in. All kinds of inventions. I bet you wish you invented that, Alan. <laughs> yes, I, I really do. I, I really, I really wish I had invented that because, a, I need money, and b, it would be, it would mean I was smart and I had some brain going for me. Dang it, that's genius right there. It is. And we're going for a call for Doctor Debbie. We have Jim. Hey, Jim, how are you doing? Good. Um, I had, uh, I've got two small dogs, and. Uh, they got it. I don't know which one ate the most, or if they both ate. If one just ate the whole thing and the other one did not get any. What, what did they get into? What did, yeah, what did they eat? Pork rinds. Pork, pork rinds. Oh, I used to eat those all the time when I was oh. on the Atkins diet. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, so, uh, so uh, was this a full bag of pork rinds? Uh, I would be probably uh, uh, about a half a bag. Okay. All right. Well, and uh, is, is anybody showing any symptoms as so far? Not so far, but um, I'm no longer with the dogs right now. I had to hit the road, and so my wife is watching them. But we did okay. have one dog years ago that we gave him pork chop fat, and she died from it. So I, I don't understand. we got to back up here because I'm, I'm completely confused. Pork rinds are not good for dogs? Okay, wait, pork rinds are you know really high in fat. It, it's basically the the, the deep fried fat um, from pork, and you know it's going to have a lot of salt in it, so it's kind of cured. So because of those two things, the high fat and the high salt content, it definitely can be problematic. Um, now, depending on who got it and how much was ingested by each particular dog, this may be something as simple as some stomach upset with diarrhea or vomiting. Um, I do tend to see in dogs that get into this kind of thing. You will even see a greasy nature to the stools when when they're passing their stools. So that would definitely be, I'd say, on the lower end of the concern level. On the higher end of the concern level is something, uh, pancreatitis, which I might be suspicious might have been what was going on with your other baby, um, because we know that in dogs, when they eat a high-fat meal, they get into the garbage, they get into the leftover things, good and goodies, and overdo it, it can trigger a problem with the pancreas, where too many of the digestive enzymes are released. It causes a 
abdominal pain, vomiting, can be very serious. It can be life-threatening. So that would be on the higher end of my concern spectrum. Huh. And I think with that, um, that would really, for, for your situation, Jim, I would honestly say we'd have to watch and see how we're doing. If we saw any symptoms of anyone not eating, having vomiting or just abdominal pain when you kind of touch their belly and kind of just gently squeeze, if they groan or kind of cry out, that would be a pet I'd get to the veterinarian right away. Um, but, you know, because we don't know who got what and how much, um, you know, it may just be a matter of watching and waiting there. Yeah. Should we maybe wean them off of food for a little while and... How, how recently did this happen? Just um, yesterday. Just yesterday. Well, normally, if I have a dog that gets into something that they shouldn't, um, one one thing you can do is for some dogs, we will actually give a little bit of food along the time just to give them something else with some bulk. Um, if it's already been since yesterday, I would probably just hold them off on a fast for at least 12 hours um, just to see what happens. And, you know, if you get past the point of 24 hours without incidents, um, you, you're going to be hopefully okay, um, maybe still having some diarrhea at that point. But um, that, that'll be kind of the the point of uh, kind of going, whew, you know, and hopefully we'll be uh, past that in uh, another 12 hours. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, well, with our first dog that we lost, uh, she did have pancreas, something wrong with her pancreas, mm-hmm. and passed, so we're a bit concerned about it. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, if we would have caught these guys, and, and I'd be talking to you, like, right after this happened, I'd probably be talking about some foods or some things we can do. But at this point, I think you're in the kind of the watch and wait mode there. Okay, so far there's not really showing any symptoms. Good, good. Well, very good. I hope everything turns out okay, and and you have a wonderful holiday there, Jim. All right, thank you. Thanks for your call, Jim. Fingers crossed there. 1-866-405-8405 to connect with our Dream Team. What kind of foods would you give in this dog after, if it was just right after? Are there certain foods that counteract pork rinds? Um, mostly I would just be giving something with some carbohydrates, so whether that be just a dry kibble. Um, for sometimes I'll actually give bread, believe it or not, just if it's something I want to absorb, um, you know, something that's really greasy. Um, but, yeah, usually just a good, um, solid uh, dog meal would be something I'd give them. So uh, pork rinds can't be good for humans, can they? You know, I don't know. I think anything in moderation, um, you know, I just, you know, you got to watch. There's a lot of salt in these suckers. If you've ever, I can't say I've eaten a full bag because I usually get greasified a mouth after a while. But they really do make you thirsty. So, um, you know, that would be the other thing for Jim to be ready for. Lots of drinking and lots of pee in there. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Wait, I forget where I am. Animal Radio. Animal Radio. I love that. Hey, hey, this is Paula Poundstone on Animal Radio. Spay and neuter your pets or we're going to be eaten alive. I try to find the right one, but it seems like they all just have one thing on their mind. Having only one thing on your mind can be a good thing when you find that special someone. At Geico.com, that someone is a car insurance policy. And the only thing on its mind is being your soulmate. Depend on easy online tools for paying bills and managing claims. Picture a life of savings as you gaze into the eyes of a free rate quote. That's our go-to move. Geico. 15 minutes could save you hundreds on car insurance. What do you think about when you're driving? Music? Sports? We think about nice, big, fluffy piles of insulation and filters, and motor suspension, and water projection, and things like that. We are Bosch, and we are the quietest dishwasher brand in the U.S. You could say we wrote the book on quiet, and the next chapter is flexibility. Nearly every Bosch dishwasher now features a third rack that holds silverware and whisks and tongs and spatulas and increases your loading area up to 30%. How did we do it? Well, as we said, we are Bosch. We think about things like that. Come see what we've invented for you. See the complete line of Bosch dishwashers at Sears or visit Sears.com slash Bosch. 
quietest dishwasher brand in the U.S. based on an average of sound ratings on major brands' websites. Major brands define as trackline top 10 brands March 2013. 30% more loading area compared to a Bosch dishwasher with two racks. We've talked about Stella and Chewy's family of freeze-dried and frozen dinners for dogs. Now we're pleased to share two new exotic dinner additions, Simply Venison and Absolutely Rabbit. Both are made with 90% single-source protein and enhanced with organic fruits and vegetables. Each are fortified with vitamins, minerals, and probiotics to be 100% complete and balanced. Stella and Chewy's, the official food of Ladybug, Animal Radio Studio Stunt Dog. Only the good stuff. For more information, go to StellaandChewy's.com. Underwriting for Animal Radio comes from Stella and Chewy's. Check out their brand new intro packs. The Chewy's Chicken Dinner, the Simply Venison, the Stella Super Beef, and the Duck Duck Goose and the Phenomenal Pheasant. All available where Stella and Chewy's is sold. And uh, be sure to check out their website, StellaandChewy's.com. How you doing, Wayne? I'm doing good. I have a very contrarian uh, cockapoo that does not want to get trained. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe Alan can help you here. What, what... Maybe you don't want to be trained, Wayne. Maybe that's the real problem here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've had big dogs all my life, like Labs and Great Dane, and I've never, ever had one that's been so stubborn as this little cockapoo. What makes you say that, Wayne? Uh, she was very difficult to get house trained, um, and I was home with her. I'm normally an over-the-road truck driver, but I was off on a shoulder injury when we first got her, and I was home for, the, like, the first four months, and it took that whole time to get her house trained. And then, you know, she's stubbornly refused to learn how to come, even though I've worked with her, like using a a piece of, like, fishing line on her collar to pull her when, you know, just gently when she doesn't want to come. Most of the time, sometimes she's found out that, yeah, there's a treat coming behind it when she does come. And then other times she just will stubbornly sit and look at you. Well, you know, Wayne, here's the thing. Every dog is different and yet the same. Because each mm-hmm. breed has their, each breed has their traits. They all have different traits, different things that they were bred to do. But because each dog is different, us humans have to learn how to teach our dogs what we want. And sometimes you think your dog is being stubborn, but in reality, your dog doesn't know what you want. So the best thing you have to do, the first thing you have to do before you try to teach your dog anything is tire that little boy out. you got to take him out. I don't know what he likes to do, if he likes to run around like a maniac or if he likes to go for walks because walks are the dogs love walks. They look forward to them. They, they, They relish walks. So you get him tired out. I mean, you get him to where he's running around for 40 minutes to where all he wants to do is pant and lay there. And then let him rest a little bit, and that's when you train your dog. That's when you teach your dog things, when he's all tired out, because he's going to be much more receptive to you. And I like to play a little game to teach a dog to come. What, what I do is I just put him on a leash, and I will teach the dog to stay, you know, by, by you know, rewarding him for sitting still, which is easy to do when they're tired. And then I'll just say, come, and give him a gentle tug. And I'll do it over and over and over again. You have to remember that a dog has a two-year-old brain. It's never going to get any better than that. Most people will brag about how smart their dogs are. They're really not that smart. It's that simple. They learn through repetition and reward, repetition and reward. You do it over and over again. And then you take the leash off and you say, come, and you'll see. Your dog will come to you. It may take you a couple of days, a couple of weeks to get this done, buddy, but you've got to be patient, and you've got to stop uh, describing your dog as stubborn. Your dog is not stubborn. Your dog is just not understanding what it is you want. Remember that. All right. Yeah. Okay, Okay, buddy. I will certainly uh, work on that. All right, pal. Good luck to you, buddy, and call back and let us know how it's going. I will. All right, thanks. There he goes, Wayne calling in, one 405 8405 to talk to any one of the Dream Team. Could be Dr. Debbie, dog trainer Alan Cable, or Joey Volani stuck in traffic. Is that the deal? He's stuck in traffic. Is that why he's not here? That's what he's saying. 
Okay. You know, when you're famous like that, I mean, if people get wind of you, they look through the window and they see you, you know, there's going to be a commotion. Big crowd around him. Is Especially he, if he's driving in his, his Porsche. His Porsche with yeah. the top down. So it's really, yeah. he doesn't have the tinted windows like you do. So. How does he get in that car? How does, how does he get in there? It takes a few people, actually, to help him in. Yeah. You should have seen him like a couple of years ago. Yeah, he wouldn't have fit he, in the car a couple of years ago, yeah. but he fits in there now. He, he's the only guy alive who needs the jaws of death to get in the car. <laughs> Uh, See so what happens when you're not here, Joey? Oh, yeah. And that's why I'm here every week. I don't want everybody talking behind my back. We want to thank the folks over at Kitty Agogo for underwriting Animal Radio. Of course, they make both the litter robot and Kitty Agogo. Kitty Agogo is an easy-to-clean litter tray with decorative hoods. Now, these are so cool because you've seen the old litter trays that you get at PetSmart mm-hmm. or Petco. They, they look yeah. like litter trays. This does not look like a litter tray. In fact, they have six different colors and patterns you can choose from. You have the uh, polka dots. I have is that the correct? polka dot, but they have different ones that you can use to match your decor, and they blend in, and they don't look like that unsightly litter box anymore. And it's not only just a good-looking litter. It has a rake inside. You can just pull the rake out. You pull the tray, pull the rake, and all the litter comes to the front, and you can just scoop it out very easily. So it's easy to use. Yes, it is. And I assume it's going to last a long time because all parts are made of the highest quality Injection molded, high impact, stain resistant plastic. Well, it even has a place on back that the litter scoop hooks to, so you have it all in one. So you don't lose the litter scoop, have to go run around the house looking for it. You can attach it right to the back of the Kitty A Go Go, and it's always there. These guys have thought of everything. Which would you choose? Metallic silver, leopard print, polka dot, flower print, burl wood, black lacquer? Maybe you should let your cat choose. <laughs> Head on over to their website, check it out at kittyagogo.com. That's kittyagogo.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at one 866 405 Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. She was shot, dragged by a dog, hung upside down, and then left in the household refrigerator for two days. But a duck, now named Perky, seems to have come back to life. A hunter's wife in Florida got an unusual greeting when she opened up her refrigerator door. A duck that her husband had shot two days earlier lifted up her head. She called her daughter, who took the duck to the vet. Perky the duck had suffered a broken leg and a broken wing, but was given to the Goose Creek Wildlife Sanctuary, where she'll live out her life in a sort of duck paradise. Now that's one lucky duck. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. Shaquille O'Neal for Icy Hot Advanced Cream. I know all about living with pain. After 19 years of pro ball, man. But now I'm feeling awesome. I see how advanced relief is the real deal. I see how advanced cream has two maximum strength ingredients to last up to 50% longer. Works great on shoulders, backs, knees, even arthritis. Icy to dull the pain and hot to relax it away. Come on now. Advance past pain and get on with living. I see hot advanced. Available in cream and patch. Pain over. Use only as directed. Fido Friendly is the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog. Each issue includes hotel and destination reviews, along with health and wellness topics, dog training tips, and the latest fashion trends. Pick up a copy at Barnes & Noble, Hastings, or go online to FidoFriendly.com and subscribe today. Fido Friendly is the only magazine dedicated to the travel and lifestyle of man's best friend and the one magazine your dog will thank you for. What dog food is specifically designed to reduce the risk of cancer, settle digestive upsets, reduce scratching and shedding? Canine caviar. What dog food reduces red tear stains and hot spots? Canine caviar. What dog food has probiotics that reduce the chance of soft stools and have a higher calorie count for better nutrient absorption? Canine caviar. So what are you feeding your dog? If you didn't answer Canine Caviar, visit CanineCaviar.com today and get your pet started on a longer, healthier life. Geico presents Fan Mail to a Pig. Dear Maxwell, first off, I really enjoy your commercials about Geico's app. I watch them over and over and over. They make me both laugh and very hungry. Weird. 
Anyway, I just want to let you know how Geico's new claim status updates on the app really blow me away. Getting those updates makes me think of you. I'd like to thank you in person. Just send me your address. All the best, Big Bad W. Sure thing, Big Bad W. I got a pen. It's 802 Not Gonna Happen Lane. Claim status updates just a tap away on the Geico app. This is an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies with thousands of quality products at low prices every day so you save on every order. Visit fosterandsmith.com. I'm Stacy Cohen for Animal Radio. A man in Miami is responsible for capturing and killing the largest Burmese python ever recorded in Florida. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, this record-breaking serpent was a 128-pound female. It measured 18 feet, 8 inches in length. Now, that shattered the previous record of 17 feet, 7 inches. Apparently, Miami resident Jason Leon was driving in a rural area of Miami-Dade County when he and a passenger spotted this giant reptile in the roadside brush. Well, he grabbed the snake by the head, and he began pulling it out of the brush. That's when this python began wrapping itself around his leg. After he got some help from his buddies, Leon killed the snake with a knife. Kristen Summers of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission says the commission is grateful to Leon for safely removing the large snake and then reporting it to authorities. A rare 19th century torpedo is back in the Navy's hands thanks to the works of a few bottlenose dolphins. The L.A. Times reports Navy-owned dolphins discovered a HAL torpedo while being trained to track down underwater objects off the California coast. Only one of the antique underwater weapons was known to exist prior to the discovery. The dolphins are trained to use their natural sonar to discover objects that not even billion-dollar military technology can detect. The torpedo is bound for the Washington Naval Yard, where it will be uh, cleaned and then put on display. A designer in Seattle's come up with an easy way to transform an average house cat into king of the jungle, the lion hat. Yumiko Landers told Metro uh, uh, UK that the idea for the feline headpiece came from her sewing group. While making something to fit the cats and dogs theme that week, Landers came up with a so-called hat that allows the cat to sport a lion's mane. The product even comes in multiple colors, including golden brown, black, gray, ivory, and Husky. Lander sells the hats online through Etsy. I, I don't know if you've ever seen that website. It's great. It's got a lot of craft stuff. That's E-T-S-Y. And says she never would have expected it to, to be getting so many orders from all over the world. The American Heart Association has declared that pets, especially dogs, guess what? They're good for a person's heart. Further proof that dogs are among the best friends a person can have. Dr. Glenn N. Levine, director of Baylor University's Cardiatric Care Unit, was quoted in a press release from the AHA saying pet ownership, particularly dog ownership, is probably associated with a decreased risk of heart disease. He said that owning a dog may help reduce cardiovascular risk because dogs bug their owners into taking them for walks on a regular basis. And dog owners were, according to the AHA study, 54% more likely than non-dog owners to get a suggested amount of exercise. So good news, no doubt. Get out there with your dog. I'm Stacy Cohen. Get more animal breaking news at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies. Visit fosterandsmith.com for pet supplies selected by veterinarians with 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Doctors Foster and Smith, your trusted source for quality, affordable pet supplies. Veterinarian owned with veterinary expertise behind every product. Doctors Foster and Smith has thousands of name brand pet products, including pet medications, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day, so you save on every order with free shipping on orders $49 or more. Fast service delivered right to your door. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. Call 888-679-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So cancel the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 888-679-MY-TV. Right now, to sign up for packages starting as low as $24.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $24.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 888-679-MY-TV that's 888-679-MY-TV 
cancel the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call now, 888-679-MY-TV. That's 888-679-MY-TV. Okay, you ready? I'm going to let go of the bike now. Wait, not yet, Dad. No, just keep pedaling. You've got it. Don't go, don't go. There are moments in life that cause us to hesitate. I already did. You're doing it. Woohoo! I'm doing it. But once we take action, we're awfully glad we did. Markets are changing, and interest rates are still low. If you're thinking about getting into the real estate market, now may be the time to make your move. Every market's different. Call a Realtor today and visit Realtor.com. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. Stole free one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. Having more fun than I think legally allowed by law here in the studio. Judy, you are quite the dancer. This song is like one of my favorites. Great news comes out of uh, Finland. Where, of course, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer lives during the uh, off-season. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there's been such... They have a lot of these reindeer up there. I guess mm-hmm. the big deal is they're hitting them with their cars all the time. Ouch. So they've been trying to figure ways to not hit the reindeers. Right. And they put reflectors on their uh, antlers, which uh, oh, uh-huh. apparently get, they bite them off. Oh, really? Yes, they do. Uh, so now they're painting them with reflective... Uh, spray paint. Really? Trying it out on 20 reindeer wow. with fluorescent dyes to see how uh, the animals react. Oh, I, I want to see them. I want to see them catch the reindeer and hold them still <laughs> while they're actually applying any of these things. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, there's over 200,000 reindeer there, Jeez. just in the Helsinki area. Wow. So, uh, good news coming from Helsinki there. One eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. Toll free to reach out with the Dream Team. And uh, before we head to this phone call over here i wanted to uh this is kind of interesting you know no you know what i'll hold off on that i'm sorry let's, let's go right oh make a sense. Us, i know i didn't is. even really give you a good tease but it is a great story here's here's something that's really cool this lady that we're about to talk to has a pet octopus you know i'll repeat it pet octopus not a cat not an iguana not a flamingo and we've heard from listeners over the last 13 years that have owned all of those but never one that was a, an octopus guardian. We welcome to the airwaves, Nancy King. Hi, Nancy. How are you doing? Well, fun. How are you? I'm so curious. <laughs> I've got so many questions. I don't even know where to start. I guess, how does someone end up with a pet octopus? Uh, well, in my case, uh, I was just um, looking for something new, and my husband gave me a plush octopus, a plushy toy. And I went online to find more about it and learned all about it, especially from the website uh, www.tanmo.com, which is all about octopuses. And uh, after that, I decided I wanted to keep one, but I knew it was a long path because I had no saltwater experience. So yeah. it took me over six months to set up a tank. Wow. And then you buy an octopus, uh, really, it's uh, online. You buy it online? to you. Really? really? Now, wow. now, did your husband object to this at all? No, no, he agreed to help me. And we agreed that we would uh, actually stick close by to be there for the octopus because we knew they didn't have a long lifespan, maybe oh. a year, maybe less. Oh, really? They're wow. short lifespan. Well, I know they have three hearts, which is uh, interesting. I guess they also have a brain that's right around their esophagus. They're, well, they're the really interesting weird. thing is that they um, have kind of a distributed nervous system, and they have, uh, well, in essence, brains in their arms. Um, it's quite different than the way we're set up. So that's a lot of what people are studying today. Well, when I get so a how, pet, I want a pet that I can interact with and, yes. and stuff. So what do they... How do you interact? Yeah, how do you interact with... What do they do? Um, well, if you get a good one, and all octopuses seem to have different personalities. So if you get a really good one, um, they start... They, they watch you. They always make eye contact. And so they're watching you, and you're watching them. Uh-huh. And you usually start out with a feeding stick, which is something long like a skewer, and you put a piece of uh, shrimp on the end of that. And you put it down in, and they get used to you feeding them. And so they eat seafood, obviously. Okay. Oh, well, yes. And they like most expensive type. They like uh, crabs and shrimp, mostly. They like to go to Red Lobster. Yeah. <laughs> you can't run out and get octopus chow. Uh, no, you cannot do that. But you can run to Whole Foods and get shrimp. <laughs> well, that can't be a cheap... No, and people should realize that they'll think, well, an octopus is not expensive. Well, the octopus itself might be under $50. But by the time you figure out the food and all the extra equipment and this and that, having crabs shipped in, which I did, 
They came in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> now, did your octopus play games with you? Yes, played a lot of games. What um, did they do? I suppose the first one was uh, when she learned to pull off the magnet. Uh, the cleaning magnet has two sides, an outer side and a side inside the water. Uh-huh. And she pulled that off, uh, creating a great clunk. And first of all, we'd all come running because we'd hear it. But then she would retreat into her den, and she would dangle the cleaning magnet out on one sucker. <laughs> and I had reached down to get it, and she'd sap it inside her den again. And she did this again and again. It was frustrating but funny. Oh, wow. Oh. We are with uh, Nancy King. She has a eight-legged uh, pet, an octopus. And I, I understand that the octopus will watch a lot of TV. I had six people report to me that they did this. My octopus. And I should say that Ollie is no longer with us, but um, oh. she was a victim of that short lifespan. Yeah. Uh, anyway, these other people did have their tanks where you, the octopus could see the TV, and they reported that uh, the octopus was interested in sports and cartoons, bright, moving pictures like that. Wow. One had uh, claimed that his octopus watched the football games with him. Do they get out of the tank? Can they escape? Yes, they do. Can they live out of water? To- octopus proof it they can live a little while out of water um the kind of octopus i had actually uh goes into tide pools she calls into tide pools hunting for food so she gets out of the ocean and uh, is on land a bit and so they can live a while uh not long maybe maximum half an hour out of water i understand well the first first of all the tank is 55 gallons but i understand you have to have an emergency backup tank what is that for well, if I were buying it today, I would buy a larger tank. We're learning all these things uh-huh. more. I would buy 75 to 125 gallons. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, second thing is you have a backup tank for food. Um, also, it can be there in case of emergencies. Uh, something happens with the water. What could happen to the water? Well, the octopus could ink, for one thing. And ink? The, the equipment, the protein skimmer, will take most of that out uh, fairly quickly. Oh. But um, what is that all about? What is, what is it? What, what are they doing? Is that a, is that a sexual thing? What is it? No, no, no. It's a protective thing. Oh, okay. And would they, it kill them if they live in it? Well, it doesn't kill them. They don't live in it. You get it out of the water pretty fast. But if they were in the ocean and they wanted to um, get away, they could puff out a big ink cloud, and they would deter the predator. The predator would think maybe the, the ink cloud is the octopus. The octopus is meanwhile escaping. I personally have never treated an octopus, but I do have doctors <laughs> that work on marine life, that worked on rays, and, and all sorts of interesting kind of fish-like creatures. So, um, you know what? I, I know there's veterinarians out there that will, will address these. Have you ever had to take your octopus to the vet? Uh, no. we Actually, we, we support each other through this website, and we have access to marine biologists and uh, people who uh, work in labs and people who know more about uh, medicines. So we know what can be used and what can't. And I never had any problems personally that I had to resort to any sort of treatment. Well, I'm just really intrigued because for me, living 10 months is pretty sad. I I would just wonder if, you know, we got more marine biologists and vets involved, if these little guys could last a little longer. Live longer lives. Well, since the... They mate, no, they didn't mate. They breed at the end of their life in the sense that they produce eggs. Uh, They can actually breed much earlier, and the female octopus saves the sperm and uses it when she wants to. But that signifies the end of their life. They go into senescence or die after the eggs. I think they could be very useful when you you know have empty ink cartridges for your printer. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You're always thinking of the good stuff, Alan. Thanks so much for hanging with us today, Nancy. I appreciate it. Okay, well, nice to talk to you. Take care of yourself. By the way, check out t o n m o dot com, which stands for the Octopus News Magazine online. There you go. I got to tell you, I I don't understand the, the the website. You know, I mean, how many people do you think are out there that want to buy an octopus for a pet? You'd, be, You'd surprised. be surprised. All right, it's Vinnie Penn coming at you again on Animal Radio with the Party Animal segment. I know a lot of you out there listening are, are, are pet lovers to like the 10th degree. And uh, I've heard this story a million times before where some somehow people wind up having the same hairdo as their pet. And I have seen funny photos on Jay Leno, not that I watch that show regularly or wherever. 
Um, but I've never seen it live and in person until the other day. I was picking my son up at daycare in a neighborhood uh, that I don't really go to. And I've, I've heard the legend of this woman. She was out walking her dog. And listen, the hairdo was it was so identical, it could, it has to have been done on purpose. She has to be taking a picture of her dog. They even had like the same ribbon or whatever in their hair. She has to be going to her salon and saying, could you make me look like this? To which the stylist must say, well, God already took care of the face. <laughs> Are you out there really doing this? Doing your hair like your dog's or doing your dog's hair like yours? This is terrifying. This is a movement that need be stopped. As a matter of fact, why don't you inundate the the animal radio, the general, or Hal Abrams uh, inbox, as a matter of fact, with photos. Maybe we could start posting the, the ones who have a contest of sorts. And the prize could be therapy. Vinny Penn, Party Animal on Animal Radio. Hi, it's Alan Cable with another dog tip. Folks call Animal Radio a lot with training questions. How do I get my dog to do this and to stop doing that? Well, we all know what a hassle housework can be, right? Imagine if your dog did the cleaning for you. I know what you're thinking. That's impossible, but it isn't. You're about to meet Jesse, the Jack Russell Terrier. He cleans up spills. He vacuums, dusts, even shines his owner Heather's shoes. So how did Heather train him to do it? Well, it's easier than you might think. Your dog might not be able to do housework, but there's so many things you can teach your dog just by taking advantage of his nature. Jesse showed a knack for tricks early on. So here's what we always talk about on the show and how Heather taught her dog, Jesse, to do housework. I guess positive reinforcement, when they're doing something that you like, basically encourage them. So when your dog is doing something you like, you tell him he's a good dog and give him a treat. Set him up for success. A lot of it involves patience, just waiting for your dog to do something, no matter what it is, that you like. Jesse, go scooter. First, Jesse put his paws on the scooter and she prayed him gave him treats next he put his paws up and he made it move again she praised him and gave him treats good boy heather was there every step of the way to reward jesse so how do we apply this to your dog let's take something really basic like lying down in the same spot you can guide your dog to that spot and have your dog go down or you can just wait till your dog goes to the spot and goes down either way when your dog goes to that spot and lies down you give your dog praise and a treat now to take it to the next step have somebody ring your doorbell when it happens guide your dog to that spot with your body and have him lie down. If he looks like he's getting geared up to bark, give him a really quick correction, either with a poke with your fingers, a quick snap of the leash, or a loud sound to refocus his mind. When he does, hold up your hand like a stop sign, and when you get him to stay, you give him a treat, tell him what a good dog he is. Over time, you're going to see your dog going to that spot more and more often when you're around, and eventually he'll automatically go there when the doorbell rings. He's going to start to associate being in that spot with praise and treats. Get more tips at Animal radio.com you're listening to animal radio call the dream team now at 1-866-405-8405 you're listening to animal radio if you missed any part of today's show visit us at animalradio.com or download the animal radio app for iphone and android well, let's head back to the phones the numbers are toll free. One eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. On the other end of that phone, Judy, she's screening your calls for Doctor Debbie, Dog Trainer Ellen Cable, and Dog Father Joey Volani, who's actually stuck in Denver at DIA today. Uh, inclement weather is on his way back to California from New Jersey. Poor guy. And yeah, I guess he's stuck in an airport, so he couldn't uh, join us this morning. But we'll still answer your questions here. Of course, Dr. Debbie's books, if you haven't checked them out yet, Yorkshire Terriers, Shih Tzus, Pugs and Mini Schnauzers, How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend, a great read. If you own one of those breeds, you definitely want to pick it up. It's sort of like an owner's manual. And I got to tell you, Dr. Debbie's a pretty good writer. She knows her stuff. I welcome back my bud, Mark, traveling across the country with his, what, 23, 40, 50 dogs? You have a lot of dogs. <laughs> Forty, fifty. I I have a hard time keeping track of all of them. I'm yeah. so envious. That yeah. sounds like so much fun. Oh, really? All of them packed into an RV? It doesn't yeah, sound it like does. a lot of fun to me. That's a lot of poop. <laughs> yeah. Where Where are you now? I'm um, uh, down in the Keys. I'm on Marathon Key. So right now I'm gonna 
hang out on the Atlantic side of the uh, key because it's a little nicer here, more of a breeze, which keeps the mosquitoes away. Oh, yeah. Well, do you have any mosquito problems? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that, that's why I wanted to talk to you about this because, uh, first and foremost, I trust you guys and your dream team, Hal. I mean, um, when I when I have pet questions, who do I call? You, right? You usually call when you have any kind of question, but yeah, that's okay. I mean, I, I think I implicitly <laughs> trust all of our doctors and 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 trainers and and everybody that works here at Animal Radio because they know what they're doing. Well, and you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna try and just sell me something. You know, you go to the internet and everybody wants to sell you a product. So here's here's my my question is actually it's got two levels here. I'm concerned about my dogs and I'm concerned about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's you know it's mosquito season uh, in most parts of the country right now, and I want to I want to keep the mosquitoes off the dogs because naturally the mosquitoes go where the hair is thinnest around the ankles, the top of the head, bridge of the nose, around their eyes, stuff like that. But mm-hmm. uh, I know that there's medication that you give them to, you know, keep Nile virus and heartworm and all that other stuff out mm-hmm. of them. But uh, the mosquitoes seem to bother them. But then they bother me because you bring the dogs in the house. Oh, look at that. There's 20, 30 mosquitoes swarming off of the dogs. <laughs> so I was, you know, I'm thinking, all right, well, I can spray you know, cutters and skin so soft and all this stuff on me, on my skin. So my logic tells me, well, maybe I could spray it on the dogs. But I realize the dogs are going to uh, lick their paws and lick various mm-hmm. areas. So Okay. And you have is, only what dogs? Is it? What do we do to keep mosquitoes off a of dog so that we're not bringing them in the house? Okay. And do you have only dogs you're traveling with or do you have cats as well? I have just dogs, but I'm, I'm sure dogs. it could be the same with cats. And in fact, I have a friend of mine who has a bunny rabbit, and they were saying they can't even take their bunny rabbit outside because the same thing. All the mosquitoes swarm inside the the fur, and then uh, they become free range inside the uh, yeah. you know, inside yeah. the house. Okay, well, that just helps to clear things up because with cats, we have a little different rules when it comes to some of the flea products. They are very sensitive to some of the very common flea, tick, mosquito repellents that we might use. So you just have to use a different set of rules with cats. For dogs, I mean, you can pretty much pick up most flea tick sprays that are pyrethrin-based, which is a common ingredient in insecticide, uh, safe for animals. If you have cats, you have to be careful. You can't use some of these dog products with them. But that would be one thing that if you're going outside, you can spray that on them, and it'll give them some short-term relief while you're going out to keep those critters away. Now, but you did mention some other things that are kind of natural, and Skin So Soft, believe it or not, is proven to help repel parasites. So uh, mosquitoes um, do stay away. And in animals, we can use it. I usually do dilute it. Um, I try to dilute it about, you know, 50% with water. Water. You can put that in a spray bottle, spritz it on them, uh, other than being maybe a little oily kind of texture that you feel on their fur. Um, you know, it's very safe, um, and it works. So I would I would definitely endorse that. Um, and it's interesting, you know, there's a lot of different kind of natural oils that, essential oils, um, you know, folks that are looking for natural remedies, they they do repel mosquitoes. Um, you just have to be a little bit cautious with some of those products, uh, making sure you don't get um, high concentrations so they're not toxic. And um, one essential oil actually comes from catnip. Uh, and it has, I actually read a research article um, a ways back that proved that catnip was a far more effective mosquito repellent than DEET uh, by 10 times. Um, I don't know wow. that they figured out how to put catnip into a form we can administer on top of our pets, but, <laughs> but it might make our cats happy wow. about that. Um, well, well, let me ask this, because um, so many old timers uh, and, and, and people who, I mean, Coast Guard guys and all these people that are always out, you know, in the Caribbean and whatnot. They always they rub themselves down with uh, baby oil, and it's, mm-hmm. uh, they say that that keeps the mosquitoes off because the mosquitoes don't want to get anywhere near oil. Is baby oil safe for a dog? <laughs> 
you know, baby oil, I don't believe has any essential oils. And, and I would be a little concerned because if we're slathering on an oil, it can actually amplify the sun's rays and, and the sun exposure. So we have more chance for sunburn and things like that. So I probably oh. wouldn't go with that, with that route. You know, but a lot of the regular flea tick products that you use, you know, Advantix, um, there's other spot on products. Um, those have repellency for mosquitoes. So you can use that and maybe also add in something like a kind of a natural relief um skin so soft being one of them um so i I would try you know combination of those things and uh, you know you mentioned like cutters and some of the things that we use for ourselves um we can use deet in low concentrations on dogs and there are dog products that have it it's usually oh i believe it's under 10 percent concentration of deet but you have to watch the human stuff is high potency so it's usually 50 to 90 percent deet so um you have to use caution and I, i definitely prefer folks use um, a pet approved product if they're looking for a deep one. Mm. Okay, see, now that's why I called you, Hal, because <laughs> I got a straight answer, something I could understand. I got the connections here with Dr. Debbie and uh, Alan Cable, dog father Joey Villani. You know it. I got the hookup. Thanks for calling, Mark. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so silly. <laughs> That's all we have for today. Be sure to check us out at AnimalRadio.com and download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. You can ask your questions right from the app as well as listen to the shows. A whole bevy of information and resources at that app. Anytime you desire. We'll catch you next week for more Animal Radio right here on this fine station. Bye. Bye-bye. Sayonara. This is Animal, Animal. 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 Radio Network. Network.